I'm sharing my slides. Okay, so now, you know, when we decide about yoga therapy for schizophrenia, there are certain things that we have to keep in our mind. One is about schizophrenia as an illness. You know, you have had a, a an understanding about the pathophysiology of the disease, about the Ayurveda perspective of the disease. Now, from the yoga point of view, schiz means split. Phrenia means personality. So, you know, what happens in schizophrenia is that there is a disconnect. There is a split. Split between what? There is a split between my thought and my emotions. My emotions and my expressions. There is a split between different circuits in the brain. The closer circuits are too tight. Different The circuits which are distant are not well connected. There is a disconnect between the individual and the society. You know, So there is a tendency to not being able to connect to people around or there is a tendency for social withdrawal. So you see that split that happens at the, at the intrapersonal level, that happens at the interpersonal level. And yoga comes from the root yuj, which means to connect. So in that way, we see that the very philosophy of yoga is about connecting, about harmonizing my connection with my own mind, body and breath, my emotion and intellect, connecting me with myself and me with the universe. So in that sense, we see that naturally yoga as a therapy comes up as a very, you know, a different dimension uh, in the treatment of schizophrenia. As Dr. Shivrama presented, there are a lot of scientific evidences now that you are aware of that yoga can help specially improve the negative symptoms in schizophrenia. Negative symptoms means the, the social withdrawal and, uh, you know, the negative uh, uh, effect, uh, inability to connect those kind of symptoms in schizophrenia. Now, we are going to talk about the practice of yoga, what are the kind of practice of yoga that are helpful in schizophrenia and what is the logic behind choosing those practice. And there is another dimension to it, you know, that uh, there are certain situations where the spiritual symptoms that people get uh, in certain uh, situations, they overlap with the, the symptoms that people see in schizophrenia. And many a time this also has happened that uh, those who are spiritually evolved, you know, were considered as having this disease, whereas those people who actually had this disease were considered as somebody spiritually evolved. This is a very interesting model. It is called as ego versus intelligence model. You know, this is the model that uh, I prepared during my MD thesis, which was on schizophrenia. So, dear friends, I would like all of you to focus on this. Uh, please see that there are four quadrants in this graph. The x-axis, the horizontal axis is the ego from zero to infinity. The y-axis, the vertical one, is the intelligence from zero to infinity. Now what we have done here is we have plotted a graph between these two axes and tried to see where different kind of mental illnesses belong. So we see that in the first quadrant, you know, where both sides there is infinity. On one side, the ego is moving towards infinity. Ego, here I mean by ego is my tendency to identify myself strongly with my mind-body complex. And intelligence, you know, is the ability to perceive things as they are and find out, you know, the, 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 the solutions. So now here we see that the anxiety is the initial part that we see because the individual has eyeness and he wants to preserve this eye. He wants to protect this, uh, this uh, what he considers as his self, the mind-body complex. But at the same time, the individual is becoming more and more intelligent. You know, so as you become more intelligent and as you become more and more identified with your mind-body complex, the first thing that comes in the mind is anxiety. Why does anxiety come? 
because one starts thinking about too many things too many possibilities you know one starts uh, thinking about the future what if, if this happened what is if that happened because there are so many things with an intelligent person would like to plan and think about so in the initial phases there is anxiety but then as the ins becomes more and more more and more strong with the mind body complex as the intelligent grows it is possible that the ego you know is not able to contain that level of information that level of intelligence within this small identification and there can be a breach in the boundary of the ego and due to this breach in the boundary of the ego person may find it difficult to differentiate certain things from others and the self you know whether it is happening within me or it is happening outside that kind of differentiation may go away and person may become prone for schizophrenia where there is you know uh, these kind of delusions that come up that are uh, paranoid in nature or different kind of delusions which are not actually the facts mentally or person may even start perceiving things which are actually in the mind outside as reality so in this way uh, this is how yoga sees and in this particular domain we see that the vrittis according to patanjali that are dominant here are viparyaya and vikalpa vrittis viparyaya is a vritti where mithya jnanam tadrupa pratishtham there is a false knowledge which is projected on an object vikalpa is shabd jnana anupati vastu shunyo vikalpa where there is no object but you are just projecting your imagination and considering them as real so this is also dominated by the swapna uh, vritti which is viparyaya and vikalpa rajoguna is more here because the person is intelligent also he is having a strong ego also so both of them drive the person towards uh, rajas and from the a u ma domains that we have previously discussed the u kara is more dominant here you know so this is one spectrum now look at the graph down you know the quadrant below this you know the anxiety neurosis graph here if you see here what is happening is that on one hand the identification with the mind body complex is increasing but the cognition by intelligence you can also say cognition the cognition is going down you know if the cognition goes down if the person becomes dull he stops uh, uh, you know interacting with things his mind becomes slow and dull then the intelligence reduces and the, here the person goes to another extreme where he is entering into a kind of a depression and if that depression becomes continued and becomes more and more severe then he gets into nihilistic kind of delusions and there also a, a a psychosis comes up you know in the form of severe depression you also get depression uh, complicating into a psychosis so that is another form of psychosis another spectrum of psychosis which is less aggressive but which is more uh, you can say is associated with more inactivity dullness vegetation uh, we may call it as uh, catatonia we may call it uh, heavy phrenic schizophrenia in the earlier there were these kind of demarcation from paranoid schizophrenia and this one so this is kafaja unmada according to ayurveda and the other one was vataja unmada and then you know the left upper graph you see if a person uh undergoes a process through a spiritual process undergoes a gradual systematic effacement of his ins his ins also keeps on expanding you know so ins keeps on dissolving and his existence keeps on expanding in proportion with the intelligence so the person is becoming more and more receptive to the universe but at the same time through spiritual practices he has also been able to dissolve his sense of ins not being restricted to only this mind body complex you know so aham brahmasmi kind of a situation where this aham is not his own i with this mind body complex but this i has actually dissolved into a expanded universe a expanded sense of existence and there we see that the ego ins comes down and the intelligence increases and this is the journey with the spiritual people take and people here in the beginning are more mindful they they remain more in the jagrata sthana they are more towards sattva guna but then slowly as they grow they even transcend that and move towards gunatita and then the fourth the the remaining one where the the 
Iness also goes towards zero. The person does not feel one with the body and mind and the intelligence also goes towards zero. Then such a person, you know, is becomes more and more vegetative, a, a, a person with severe intellectual disability, you know, a severe Down syndrome, you might have come across. So they, it is like a person who is a very small child where the ego has not yet developed, a two or three year old child, which, uh, you know, is more, uh, uh, vegetative and not able to understand what is uh, happening within and not able to identify with anything without any intelligence. So in this way, these are the ego versus intelligence model that yoga perceives and why this graph is important is because in all this, the way that yoga works is that we want to enhance their pramana vritti. We want to bring them more and more into the present moment, make them chant more akara sound and enhance sattva in the mind. So the tamas and rajas both can cause or aggravate this problem. So we want to promote the sattvic lifestyle in this condition. Now this is a paper that uh, you would have already seen. This is a paper that we published in the year 2016. Schizophrenia patient or spiritually advanced personality, a qualitative case analysis. Actually, this was a very interesting case who came to us in SVSA University. And this person, you know, was from Pune, 34 year old male. And he did not have any other symptom except that he was not working. He was not feeling motivated. He was an engineer, but not feeling like uh, doing any kind of a job, mechanical engineer. And he... Uh, reported that he doesn't feel any sense of self. He feels that inside him, it is a shunya. It is complete zero. And uh, if he looks into the mirror, he sees that the person in front of him is not him, he is somebody else. And within his existence, within his mind, he is completely zero. He is complete shunya, complete blank. If you if you properly, you know, uh, see some spiritual text like Nirvana Shatakam by Shankaracharya, he says that, Mano buddhi hankara chittani naham. You know, so he is saying, uh, so nacha uh, grana netre nata. So, so he is saying that I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the pancha kosha, I am not the... So here also, we, uh, you know, actually got confused whether the person is in a very advanced state of spiritual realization and it is a person who has become a gunatita or he is a person who actually suffers from a psychopathology. So what we did was, we searched the literature and in the literature, we could not find out any proper uh, information about this even in modern psychiatry. In fact, this is a gray area which psychiatrists also have not been able to explore further. And in history, we have seen that uh, Swami Ram Krishna Paramhamsa, you know, when he used to speak to Ma Kali, uh, he was called as a mad priest of uh, Dakshineshwar. We see that uh, uh, Swami Paramhamsa Yogananda was uh, bullied in his school days for his bhakti, for his meditation. And uh, he was also uh, advised to see psychiatrist. So in this way, this is one thing that has happened. And on the other hand, we have also seen that people who have reached, you know, a, a status uh, in, the, in the religion, they are with the garb of a sadhu. But if, when you properly look at them, they actually are suffering from mental illness. So in this way, this kind of a confusion remains. So in this particular case analysis, we tried to interview, you know, uh, psychiatry, spiritually evolved people and based on our own clinical understanding, we came up with 30 points that could differentiate a person who has schizophrenia from a person who is spiritually evolved. So how does that happen? You know, in the paper, we have also described this particular mechanism. So these are modes of reflective consciousness, which Patanjali describes as kleshas. So initially, uh, you can see the in the center, there is normality on, uh, you can see on the right side is the spiritually advanced one. On the left side, there is a mentally ill patient. And what is happening here is first, in the asmita, uh, first you look at the mentally ill patient, you see strong asmita that leads to strong identification with the mind-body complex. 
with this strong asmita there is strong raga and dosha very so i i become very choosy i want something i don't want something i develop excessive hatred or i develop excessive attachment this is a marker of strong asmita and because of this strong likes and dislikes i am constantly in a situation of a fear whether i will be able to get what i like and whether i will have to let go of what i like and uh, whether i will have to face what i don't like this generates lot of fear and ultimately the fear of dissolution of this i or the fear of death comes in because of this excess of fear the ego boundaries you know get blurred get deranged and then there comes a confusion between the self and others that leads to altered sense of self and a person starts perceiving threats around him the 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 thinking that goes on within the mind starts appearing outside the mind and start person starts seeing getting into certain deluded kind of a thinking and starts perceiving the world in a very different way develops hallucinations his insight into his own true self completely goes away it breaks down and the person then his interpersonal relationships also become different so what is happening is in the beginning there is progressive focusing 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 of the awareness first into the mind body complex then into the senses and too much drawn with the likes and dislike of the senses which generates more and more fear and this distorts the sense of iness and and later on leads to all the complications whereas when a person advances spiritually with the spiritual practices the person minimally identifies himself with the mind body complex you know the his core uh remains somewhere else all these mind body complex emotion and all remains at the periphery so the all the transaction go to the periphery but the core remains stable and expanded whereas in mentally ill the core becomes the transient transaction that are going on with the mind body complex so with this core getting more and more stabilized and the transaction happening at the periphery his likes and dislikes become lesser and lesser as the person grows more and more the person becomes mindful but at the same time choiceless so this way or that way everything is okay you know so yena kena chita that is what in bhagavad gita krishna describes so anapekshah sthirmatihi buddhiman sa priya me priya that is what krishna says so this person as he becomes more and more master of his senses as he becomes a jitendriya as he is able to turn his whole consciousness inwards and his whole uh indriyas his senses follow the mind the mind follows the intellect and intellect is directed inwards towards the atman outwardly the person becomes more and more free and fearless because of that there is expansion he connects to something deeper within him something more expanded within him feels that sat chit and ananda within himself and then because of that there is effacement of his iness he feels a sense of union with the people around with the nature around feels more and more expanded from the family to the society to the nation to the universe you know this is the expansion of the i that takes place with such a person and in that expansion you know he perceives things which others can't can't perceive so there are intuitions that come beyond logic certain extra sensory perceptions that happen that are not possible by a normal person otherwise gets an insight into even greater reality so they say that you are awake but a spiritual person awakens himself into another deeper dimension which where we are sleeping right now you know so and as a result of this he is not socially withdrawn but he develops an unconditional love towards all the creatures without any kind of attachment or hatred so here what is happening is there is a progressive defocusing of the awareness so this particular trial that you are aware of that professor shivrama showed that at compared you know to the yoga to the exercise yoga group led to great improvement in the negative symptoms and uh, at the end of four months socio occupational functioning also improved with yoga as compared to exercise and weight list four times better socio occupational functioning and this was there in the nici uh, ce guideline also that this was published and their ability to cognize their ability to perceive uh, the facial expression also uh, change in this particular rct and the mechanism through which negative symptoms improved were actually 
by improvement in the oxytocin levels. So this is what we have shown. And I showed that the brain circuit become disconnected in schizophrenia. By the practice of yoga, in a period of six months, we were able to show a better connectivity, a better synchrony between these brain circuits. Also in this wise scan trial headed by Professor Shivrama. So what practices do we emphasize when we want to achieve this? You know, First and foremost thing we have to understand is that in schizophrenia, we do not ask them to perform intense meditations because already the sense of I and other is blurred. And in such a condition, sensory deprivation, you know, any kind of sensory deprivation can aggravate the tendency of the mind to project the imagination, the thoughts more. So the hallucinations, the delusions may aggravate. There are some case reports which have reported that people who meditated, especially the meditations where you have to sit still for a long time, keeping your eyes closed, that kind of meditation can aggravate a acute psychotic episode or can aggravate the illness of schizophrenia. So here in schizophrenia module that we teach here, we involve chanting, we involve relaxation in lying down in Shavasana. Briefly, they can close their eyes also while chanting and feel the vibration. But we do not recommend sitting idle with eyes closed for a long time. Also, the module of schizophrenia is a little dynamic module. We see one stimulating practice, one relaxing practice, one stimulating practice, one relaxing practice. Given in a fast succession, in between the practices, there is not much of a gap. Because if you give a gap, they are gone into their own, lost into their own world, their own voices, their own. So, so the module should be more engaging, little faster, and it should alternate between fast and slower practices so that people also are able to cope with the speed of the practice. So even in the tele mode, you know, we were able to deliver uh, these kind of practices uh, to the patients. So now, you know, uh, what are the practices that we would like to emphasize in schizophrenia in particular? So one thing that we emphasize here is uh, fast Surya Namaskara, twisting, forward and backward bending, all movements of the spine. And then in between, we ask them to do hands in and out breathing, hand stretch breathing. We give them side bending, tiger breathing. Uh, when you come here, you are going to observe a schizophrenia batch, which is actually our, um, you can say, the, the batch with maximum number of patients. Every day, more than 20 patients come and practice this yoga module with us in yoga center. And we also emphasize the practice of Bhastrika Pranayama. Actually, when we validated this module, we also had Kapalabhati into it. But we, when we wanted to teach this particular practice to the patients, we observed that patients found it difficult to learn and most of the patients were doing it wrongly. Like they were trying to, you know, when they were inhaling, their abdomen was bulging out and when they were exhaling, it was uh, uh, going in. So usually you have to exhale and take the abdomen in and inhale, go out. But in schizophrenia or the patient, it was not happening that way. It was more challenging to teach them. So therefore, we uh, excluded Kapalabhati from the module. But if the patient can learn, should be taught. And uh, uh, we have found that if the patient does fast breathing practices, Bhastrika, Kapalabhati and loud chanting of Akara uh, and uh, other uh, sounds like Akara, Ukara, Makara and Auma together, we have observed an improvement in their ability to socialize with people. We have also observed that people have uh, reported enhancement in their cognitive functions. In fact, the medicines that they take, the antipsychotics that they take also lead to reduction in their cognition. And it also causes metabolic syndrome. That is a major side effect. So in that also a dynamic yoga module, which can help them lose weight. Uh, one of our uh, paper also shows that yoga was able to reduce their antipsychotic induced side effects. You know, so the metabolic syndrome component came down and their uh, uh, stiffness that happens due to extra pyramidal symptom that also reduces with yoga. So uh, this is uh, in uh, brief about the practice of yoga. Now, uh, before the question and answer session, we would like to have a brief case discussion here. And with me is uh, Mr. Jaisimha. Mr. Jaisimha, 
you know uh, is uh, uh, mr jasima what is your age now i beg your pardon sir my age is the 60s 60s so he is currently into his 60s as you may know you know the the natural history of schizophrenia is such that it is an illness which affects the most uh, productive uh, time of the age it affects the people in their late teens early adulthood and then takes away their whole you know uh, adulthood where they could become something in their life and the natural history of disease is such that as the age progresses after 40 50 year of age the intensity of the illness naturally reduces so uh, jaisimma you know is a unique case because he uh, with the help of medications was able to stabilize all his positive symptoms but he was having difficulty in interacting with people he was having a difficulty in taking up a job in working uh, and uh, uh, confidently dealing with people around and it is then that uh, mr jaisima started coming to our yoga center and started practicing yoga with us you know and uh, uh, he has been associated with us now for more than 5 years uh, yes and uh, uh, not only that he completely recovered himself gained confidence but he actually you know uh, became a part of our team we hired him and he uh, is uh, uh, the part of the admin staff of our department at nimhans uh, he does the intakes he talks to patients he takes their uh, body weight their height their blood pressure and then he also fills up uh, the yoga form for them and he has been very sincere in his activities and uh, uh, he is a very important member of our team uh, in the yoga center for last more than 5 years so uh, so i welcome jaisimma here and and now i would like jaisimma to share his experience with us how has been uh, his journey uh, here uh, with us in the department and how has yoga helped him in this illness yes thank you i have been associated with the mans for the last 12 13 years office the early part was taken up with psychotherapy and medication and there was not much exercise but today got to you the mans the yoga department the yogic exercise helped me to focus and concentrate better on my immediate surroundings and i found that i was more open to sensation and more uh, personally oriented to social connections i tried to develop social connections from the time i was there and this helped me to gain, regain my confidence in this i also met a lot of wonderful people at the yoga center and they oh, they kept saying that this is your own making you have not done anything i said no sir because of you that i have reached the stage from an anxiety neurotic patient to totally clear cured is something which even no psychotic person will say but there is absolutely no ch- no chance of it returning to me now it has been almost 6 years in the yoga center and all this has been due to the development of personality and training for which i'm grateful and the medication which we took was only an indicator that certain things have to be done which have to change our personality but other than that there were after effects which i found difficult to manage initially but then i grew with it and i grew up with it in such a way that it kept me going back and forth to the point of coming I mean, over coming my problems in a problems and finally i have to say that this all life is yoga all life is yoga and if you take the inner attitude things are bound to change but only if you are stop what if you take too much tobacco too much meat it's aggravate the senses and causes a hypochondria which only to worsen the situation 
So the sattvic attitude is, is the best attitude which I learned to, after coming to the yoga center. Till then I was on a different wicket, but this helped me a lot in my career and my interaction with people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, sir. Everybody is clapping you for you. You know, uh, you have explained your uh, journey so beautifully and your language is so beautiful. I am impressed with your English also. So, uh, uh, Jaisima is a very smart person and he is childlike, he is very innocent and whatever work that you give him, he does it very sincerely. In fact, if I have to remember one person who will definitely make sure that this work will happen, then I have, I call it I call Jaisipa. No, so you can you. You. you can trust him. And you know, my own personal interaction with him for last five years, you know, has been that initially he used to feel a little bit of anxiety in taking more complex kind of works, but over a period of time, he has been even been able to do a very complex job as well, where our main admin person who is the backbone of the yoga center, where all patients come. The first time contact is Miss Kavita. You know, when, when you come here, you will meet her. So she is very busy because patient keep coming. She has to do the intake, send them to the doctor, get another patient in and, and uh, check their parameters. There came a point that when Kavita would be on leave, Jai Simma actually became our lead admin person you know, managing so many patients together and he has been successfully been, been able to able to do it. So this gives me a lot of confidence uh, that schizophrenia is an illness which is a chronic debilitating illness and one thing that it really, really hurts is the confidence of the person. So here we see that uh, uh, Jai Simma has almost come out of that problem now, we can consider him as completely out of it, though he still takes medications. And, and another thing that I would like to appreciate about, about uh, Jaisima is that he never skips his medications. He always takes it very regularly, religiously. And uh, he also practices yoga and uh, he helps our team. So thank you once again, uh, Jaisima, for your valuable time with us. Grateful 